Hello. Right, I'm here um, with something you might recognize from other videos of mine. This is my Moser uh, engine powered welding machine and it's stopped working properly. It sort of fizzles rather than welds, which isn't good enough. So I asked a mate of mine, he's very good with electrical things, to take a look at it. And we stripped it down, he took the circuit board out, examined the components and to my slight surprise washed the whole circuit board in hot soapy water. Which he assured me was the right thing to do. He's the expert. Nothing wrong with washing it uh, in some hot soapy water thoroughly dried out. It comes out looking good as new. Awesome. Um, tested all that and that was all fine as it happened. Uh, the reason I thought I'd make this video is because I suspect now that it's a problem which is very common to small engines, um, be they two stroke or four stroke, I've had this happen, and it's basically the carburetor. So if you've got a chainsaw, like this is basically a giant chainsaw engine, this is a two stroke engine that runs this thing. So if you've got a two stroke engine like this, or if you've got a four stroke like a motorbike or a lawnmower, and you leave it for a long time, or someone else has left it for a long time, then the problems that you're going to have are quite likely to be down to the carburetor. So what happens with petrol, I'm sure many of you know this already, but bear with me, petrol when you leave it degrades quite quickly. Over a matter of months it starts to degrade and the, the more volatile solvents disappear and they leave behind something that's akin to varnish, which gums up the inside of this. I struggled with this for years of stripping down carburetors and trying to clean them out and, and, and squirting stuff through them and, and all kinds of stuff. That's not the way to do it. I was, years ago I bought a motorbike, sort of accidentally from eBay, um, that was a non-runner. It had been lying on its side for a couple of years at the bottom of someone's garden. When it came to clean those carburetors I knew I hadn't got a hope of cleaning out the insides properly. I turned to eBay and I bought one of these. It's a cheap Chinese ultrasonic cleaner. It just happens to look like a, um, <laughs> a deep fat fryer. It's even got a basket like a fryer has. So, it, but it's not, it's an ultrasonic cleaner. So the short version of how this thing works is it has an, a, um, a little speaker underneath the pan. You fill this up with a solution, pop whatever it is you're trying to clean inside and when you start it up it makes a dreadful noise um, mainly what it's trying to do is to make an ultrasonic noise and send it through the liquid and what that does is it makes tiny bubbles form on the surfaces inside and outside of the, of the thing that you've put in there and then those bubbles implode that's called cavitation and what's happening there, the useful part of what's happening there is it's loosening any crap that's on the side and it's jiggling it out in effect. And you have to put the carburetor, carburetor in at various angles like that, like that, like that and so forth. And I, I normally have it going for about an hour in total, do it in a couple of half hour bursts. This is only a small cheapy machine and it's only really supposed to run for half an hour. So I run it for half an hour, leave it for a few, um, 10 minutes or so, another half an hour and that's usually enough for a carburetor and it's brilliant for cleaning carburetors. I haven't found much other use for it. Um, it takes the silver plating off silver plated jewellery. I just, I've discovered that. Um, but for carburetors, it's the, it's the dog's danglies. It really is. So apart from the problem with varnish um, build up inside, you can also have bits of crap that's come down, rust from this fuel tank, things like that, or just general shit that's floating about can get trapped in here and because there's such tiny tiny holes in a, in a carburetor you're not necessarily going to be able to get that out except by this jiggling it out and then it just jiggles out the carburetor and drops to the bottom of the inside of that. Right, I can see a load of crap in the bottom I'm going to try to take the float out Yeah, there you go. So if there's all this crap at the bottom of the float bowl, chances are there's, there's stuff floating about inside the carburetor as well, and that's what's clogging it up. That's my suspicion. Right, so I'm not going to strip it down very far. I'm not going to take the jets out except for this one here. Yeah, that's full of crap. So there's more, more stuff down there, not looking good. Right, that'll do. 
I've tried it with various solvents and you'd think solvents would be better at cleaning out carburetors. Unfortunately, they're also extremely volatile and when you run this thing, it makes whatever you put in it hotter. So if you fill it full of um, paint thinners or white spirits, which I've tried, um, it does get alarmingly hot <laughs> and you've got lots of um, boiling hot vapour coming off, which is going to end in tears, I'm sure. So what I do now is um, stick in something um, that, that you normally wash your clothes with and then set that going for two half hour bursts and then we'll see where we're at. Right, kettle's boiled. Don't need loads of it. You want something that's not too frothy, so washing up liquid is disastrous. <laughs> I've tried it. So, um, yeah, that's the advantage I found of the clove stuff, is it's, it's low foaming. Okay, so you should be able to see there, everything's in there. And the power's on. Right, it's the end of the second cycle. Yeah, that's loads better. That's lovely and clean. Sparkling. The water was so hot, it's almost dry as I take it out. I'm just going to blow. This carburetor might seem daunting to play with, but uh, there's no need to actually strip it down completely. I'm just taking the basic components out. Uh, happily the gasket hasn't torn. Sometimes they do and if that had happened I'd probably cut another one out of, out of um, gasket paper would probably be the way to go. You don't really want to put instant gasket uh, sealant type stuff on, on these things. So, moment of truth. Yeah, checks on, feels on. I think that's it. So that's a really common problem, like I say, with these um, little engines, be they two-stroke or four-stroke um, carburetor. It's either got some shit in it or, it's, or the petrol's turned to varnish. Uh, the other really common thing, spark plugs. So if you've got um, an engine of dubious provenance, you know, you bought it off eBay or it's just been in the shed for donkey's years, I would always be deeply suspicious of the spark plug. Even if you can get a little spark from it when it's out in the open, you think it's all right. I've, it took me years to twig this, but you can have it and you put it back in the engine and under compression, there won't be enough spark to actually do anything. Um, so yeah, spark plug, carburetor. Those are the two main culprits. And um, yeah, consider one of those little ultrasonic cleaners. Anyway, enough waffle. I hope there's been something useful there. And, uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.